Hey there. I was just looking over the data from the enthalpy experiment that we did and I thought rather than just give you numbers I would walk you through some of the process that I've been using to look at your data and uh, decide how to think about the error in the data. Let's take a quick look. So over here on my Excel sheet you know, I've got reaction 1, 2, and 3 that we did in lab. I've got a column for sodium hydroxide and the delta H that you all calculated. Uh, I put all three of those up on this sheet and then to help me evaluate the data a little bit I actually sorted them by the enthalpy uh, just so that they were in some order. Now oftentimes when we're looking at data the places that we're most likely to run into a little bit of deviation is at the ends of a range. That's where the experiment tends to get a little less reliable and there's there tends to be a little bit more noise in the data. Let's just do the stats. You know, I've got the data in here and I calculated out my stats packet. The average, if we look for reaction one, the average was 37.70 kilojoules per mole with a maximum of just under 30 and a, a minimum of just uh, 43 and a half. So max and min these are negative values so uh, they seem like they're switched. So my median seems pretty reasonably in the middle of of the data. If we think about this the way we've typically been looking at data and error and look at range over 2 error I can calculate my range the difference between my max and my min divide by 2 that gives me a 6.8 for the range over 2 error. Since we're looking at this as error, I should probably round that to a single digit and I should report this as 38, negative 38, plus or minus 7 as my reported value. A few of you asked about standard deviation as a way to assess error. And standard deviation is a great tool. It's not magic, but it, it's a good tool for us to use. Standard deviation uh, tends to do a good job of reducing the impact of serious outliers in data sets. I went ahead and calculated the standard deviation for this data set as well and it's better than the range over 2. I think by definition it always has to be better than range over 2 error or at least I shouldn't say better I should say smaller than range over 2 error. We can look at standard deviation this is a large enough data set that standard deviation is probably reasonable and looking at the way those two errors behave, went ahead and calculated a percent error on those just to give us a little bit of a handle. The range over two error is telling us that we're at about 18% error. The standard deviation error is about 7.5%. Those are both pretty good. Looking at reaction two, you know, just a a very quick little analysis again 92.01 is the average 79.4 to 99.83 is the range gives us a little bit bigger range but this is a much larger number so a bigger range might be expected just given the scatter in the data that we're working with gives me a range over two error of 10 which is about 11 percent if I look at standard deviation same way Standard deviation is just under 5, so that's about 5%. So again, the standard deviation is a much tighter error bar, and given the size of our data set, we can probably legitimately use that. Looking at reaction number 3, 54 average, and 28 up to 65. Now, that's already got me a little concerned, but let's look down at our error. Our error, using range over 2, is about 18 and a half. That's 34 percent. That seems like a pretty significant error in our measurement. If we look at standard deviation, the standard deviation is much better. So the standard deviation is only five. Uh, that's just under a 10 percent error. So one of the things that you can do when you're evaluating data is compare these different error types. If, as you see here, I've got a standard deviation error that's much, much, much tighter than the range over 2 error, 
that makes me think that there might be an outlier. That makes me think that there might be a data point at the edge of the data range that's really, really out there. Let's go up and take a look. Up at the top of reaction three, negative 65 and then 59, 59, 59, 58. So negative 65 looks like it's, it's kind of out there. It's a little farther out than the rest of these. Let's take a look at the other end of the range. 51, 51, 51, 50, 47, 28. Whoa, something is going on. Something is really out of line with the 28. And if we look at the grams of sodium hydroxide that that corresponds to, that corresponds to 11 grams of sodium hydroxide. But nobody used 11 grams of sodium hydroxide. Something's not right here. Um, either somebody did use 11 grams of sodium hydroxide, which would have thrown off a bunch of things in the experiment, or there's a calculation issue. Looking at this specifically, I know what happened here. For reaction three, remember, we had a factor of two because we only used half the original solution. So I know that this is off by a factor of two. And that's, that's really where the problem is. So if we look, there are a couple ways I can handle that. Since I know it's wrong, remember, we can use the things we learned in that first week about Excel. And if I just put a single quotation mark in front of this, now what happened? It's now all of a sudden left justified. It's got the little green, um, got the little green square. What's the little green square telling us? It's telling us that the number in this cell is formatted as text or preceded by an apostrophe. Now, what does that do? That removed it from all the calculations down here because it's text. So if you've got one point that you don't trust or that you know is wrong, you can, re you can leave the data in so the data still exists and it's still there, but you can add that apostrophe and it will be removed from your calculation. So looking down, now we've got 54.7. It didn't change the average that much, but check out those errors. We've got a range over two error now of only nine. That's only 16%. That's in line with the rest of the experiments that we did. And same thing with the standard deviation. The standard devi deviation error is only about three. That's just under 6%. And again, that's in line with the other experiments that we did. So that is a pretty reasonable treatment of this this data set. You know, that 65 up at the top is still a little suspicious, but I don't have a reason why I know that's wrong. So um, I'm going to leave it in there. Statistically, we probably could uh, remove it, but let's not. Um, the 28, again, I know the 28 is wrong. It's not just a suspicious data point. It's one that I know was calculated incorrectly. So we can remove that. That gives us a good idea of how to work up this data set just by looking at the numbers. I'm going to make up a couple upper other videos of some other ways that I look at this data set and that you can look at uh, different data sets to assess their quality and really look at some of the features of the data in different ways. So see you in the next video.